So we're back today and we're going to be working on a new project for the chickens to get ready for this winter. Um, last winter we had an electric uh, like plug-in water. Um, it didn't do that good of a job. It was always freezing up. Um, it had a plastic base and at the end of the year I think we had enough leaks in it that the heating element just burned out and quit working. So. I kept the cord from it and we're going to try something that I saw on the website to see if it works. Alright, so here's the cord that we kept off of our water. Um, you see it's an ungrounded cord, but it's got the wire protector on it so that the chickens don't peck at it. Um, so I just clipped the wires off the heating element and we've got a cookie tin. Um, it's just a metal round metal tin, uh, maybe about a foot in diameter. My wife actually found this down at the um, uh, used clothing store, a, a Goodwill thrift shop here in town. Um, so all I'm doing with this, let's see if I open it up here. I got a keyless socket adapter. This is from Lowe's. And everything you've seen in the bottom here, um, that all came in that little kit in there. And then you'll see on the side, um, I used my Dremel tool and a grinding head on it. And I just ground uh, a hole in it. Um, you want the size of your hole to be the same size diameter as this little threaded uh, lamp coupler. So here you can see we've taken our coupler and we're threading it into that hole. Um, you want to be really careful, and that's why I like using the the Dremel on this. Um, we don't want it to get any bigger than we need it. I'm not threading this hole or anything. Um, I just was really, really careful with when I ground it through um, what diameter that was. So we're going to take our, our spacer here and we'll put that down over it. And then once we get our outlet wired up, this will just thread right on the side there. So I'm going to pull the wire through and get it connected into the socket. Okay, so when you look down in the socket here, there's two screws on the inside. If you loosen those two screws, the back of the socket, that's that little piece there, will come off. So I'm going to dump those out. Inside you've got uh, two screws, and in most sockets you'll notice that one of them is brass and one of them is silver. Um, and if we turn this around, you can see that the silver is connected to the outside of the socket and the brass is connected to the center of the socket. That's because the silver is your neutral wire and the brass is your hot wire. So on our cable here, on our wire coming in, um, and all I've done is I've fed this through the loop connector through the threaded piece and then into our box here. So on our wires, we're going to use our white wire to the silver. White goes to silver. Um, that's our neutral wire. And then black is our line voltage. Uh, that's our hot. That'll go over to the brass wire. So I'm going to go ahead and put those on. Alright, so we went ahead and we attached our wires to the back of the socket. And then I put the back piece on and we put those screws back in um, to hold it all together. And I left just kind of a loop on those because I wanted this wire coming all the way up through that connector because um, I wanted to be able to screw in this little set screw onto the insulation to keep that from pulling out. So I'm going to go ahead and screw that in, and then we'll suck this up flush and even, and we'll go ahead and thread it on. Okay, so we've gone ahead and threaded um, the socket onto the little connector, and then we screwed in the set screw to hold that in place to keep it from spinning. And then I took our little pass through our hook here on the outside and just threaded that down until it was um, nice and tight. And then I'm going to use that to kind of hold our wire there on the end. 
And that's it. We're done. I'm going to go get a oh, probably about a 40 watt incandescent, I think is what I read. And we'll put that bulb in there and snap the cover on. And that should produce just enough heat uh, to keep a chicken water from freezing. Um, and not enough to hopefully melt anything or light it on fire. Okay, so we got our bulb screwed in there nice and tight. And it doesn't touch um, the can on the bottom here. And we put our lid on. Um, our top is still several inches away from the top of that bulb. So we won't actually see any light coming out. I suppose I could punch a couple holes or something if I really wanted to. Um, but all we're using that bulb for is just to heat the airspace inside of the tin. So we're going to give this a shot. Let's see if this does better than the $50 option from Orshlin. I think uh, I think the socket kit that we got was about $7. Um, and I think we paid all $0.13 cents for for the tin on uh, Friday the 13th special. So, you know, for $7 and change, we'll see how this does. So we've had our water heater out here now, and you can see that tin just fits right up underneath my regular plastic waterer from um, Orschland. And I've got a couple blocks just that help keep it level in here. Um, but it took, when I plugged it in, the water was completely frozen. And it took probably, oh, a good three to four hours for it to thaw a completely frozen block. But after it finally defrosted, um, it has stayed pretty well defrosted since then. Um, I've just got the cord out to an extension cord here held up so that it's not sitting in snow or ice. Um, and as you can see, it doesn't seem to bother the girls one bit they're going after some leftovers here but so far so good um for i don't know less than eight ten dollars worth of parts um it seems to just absolutely rock so thank you internet for a good cheap way to keep my water thawed in the winter time for my chickens